charge that I release on you is that the apostolic that God has instilled in this body is to stir the meal to awake dreams, to bring forth truth and correction. You can't be weak. You can't be a backbiter. You must walk with morals and integrity. You must be honest because guess what? To be trusted means to be trustworthy. God says he can trust you. And because he can trust you, he can trust you to carry this word. I speak provocation and empowerment. And I pray and release that the provocation of your thoughts will always be in God.
of an elder. You're not taking the head of a minister of music. You're taking a prophetic head. A prophetic head. You can't be a with a snake. You will never be able to step against the dragon. direction of 
but in every walk of life of people. That's why God had to let you shake off the things that were around you because there were certain calibers of people that you were accustomed to being with. And God had to remove you from that particular eyesight to give you the eyesight of God. Because there are people that don't look like what you're accustomed to. There are people that don't look like what you would desire, but they are the people of God. They are the people that God will allow you to open your mouth. I want you to look direct up in my eyes. Mm -hmm. There are people that you were afraid to even speak, but the Spirit of God has released a power and an authority that you will speak and you won't be condemned yourself. Glory to God. I want you to look up. Glory to God. Because God said there is something in the back of your eyes that God is going to begin to remove that you will be able to see in a greater capacity. That you will see with your mind and you won't just see with your natural eyes. But you will begin to see out of the mind of God. And when you see out of the mind of God, that's what's going to cause you not to be intimidated by the people that God will send you to. This, this office, this posture that God is calling you to is not just another prophet. It is not just someone that you've been released to be able to speak even just prophesy a word. But God said you will prophesy the word of God. You will prophesy the word of God with preciseness with clarity, and it will bring forth manifestation in God's people lives. Even the people that are sinners, they're going to be drawn to that posture of God that's inside of you. So therefore, I hear the Lord say, anything that will try to uh, infiltrate or get you off track or break your focus, God said, you're going to know instantly. Instantly, he said, follow him. Follow his voice. Follow it. Follow it. Follow it. Follow it. Don't be moved by the voices that sound like it could be because you know the difference. He said, now the time is to follow what you know. I need to read this to you. It's about the leave gate. If you read about the leave gate in Ezekiel, You'll find out that the leave gate, meaning the eastern gates, you'll find out, amen. You'll find out that the, the that the leave gates, no anybody can go through the leave gates. Jesus was the only one that can go through that gate. But now because the veil has been ripped, glory to God, God gives access to who he has ordained. And who he has allowed to be affirmed into these postures and offices of the prophet and the apostle. And God's going to release, and I, the apostle already have released a mantle upon you. But I want to release again. Hallelujah. I want to release again. Glory to God. Because God said release again. Because you're going to walk through these gates. The leave gate is gone, and now you're able to walk through the open gate in which God has called you. That would direct your feet and open your mouth in times that you know not of. You will find yourself opening your mouth and bringing forth the correction as well as instructions as well as directions. Hallelujah for the lives of God's people. So I want to uh, just read this. After I read this, I'm going to anoint you. Hallelujah. Let me get back to it. It says the eastern gate of Jerusalem is also called the golden gate. It is the beautiful gate. Come on. It is currently the oldest gate in the old city, having been constructed in the 6th and the 7th century A.D. 
Also, it is the gate that gives the most direct access to the temple. God said, I'm giving you access to the temple, meaning to the sanctuaries. As you go into the sanctuaries, glory to God. It says here that if, if a person could pass through the arts of the eastern gate, he would be very close to where Ju the Jewish temple was used when Jesus entered Jerusalem from the Mount of Olives. He used a gate in the same location as current eastern of the Golden Gate. And God is getting, we know we talk, we, we hear people talk about the Golden Gate walking through heaven and we know that's not the gate. The gate is right here on earth that God is releasing you to walk through with a voice that comes direct from him. Glory to God. And so today, God said to release the open gate for you. Go, God, lady, be your sick. Release the open gate for you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Which one can I use? Either one. Hallelujah. Let's use this. Not because I got to preach on Sunday. 
I got to stay consecrated just because something might come up in my head. Yeah, it's just a way of life now. This is just a way of life now. It's just a way of life. And, and as you begin to walk it out, what's going to happen, you're going to see old assignments, old assignments being counseled. Come on, sir. Old assignments. Because that was a hit out on you from birth. Oh my God, come on, yeah. That's why the Lord said in the last several years, I had to actually kill you come on. in the spirit yeah. to get you to really depend on who he was in the spirit. That's why the season that came where you feel like you weren't connected to nothing, you didn't want to be connected to nothing, you know what, I don't want to be no prophet, I don't want to be no preacher, I don't want to be nothing, none of that. I just want to be, you know, who I am. But because he called you, you can't identify and you can't uh, prove your own identification. When he called you, you already got your identification, everything is connected to it. But he'll go along with you until you grow up. Today, you've grown up. Today, you've grown up. And the truth of the matter is, you just kind of caught you by surprise. Because you really wasn't ready for uh, this. Uh, but because the Father is ready for you. Uh, uh, yes. That's why you don't have much choice. A lot of people after now, they are playing with their calling, they're playing with the gifts and all that kind of stuff. And Ooh. there's nothing, the gifts and callings, that's cheap. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he said, you can get that's very cheap. Gifts and calling is typical. Gifts, gifts and calling coming down with pictures. You can be a snake. You can be whatever. You still got a gift and be a call. Yeah. But when you go to walk into the office of apostle or office of a prophet, now that comes discipline. Yes. It's consecration. Yes. People's going to start asking you, why do you stay on for all the time? Why are you yeah. worship every day? Because when you concentrate all the time, you ain't got to push no buttons. Come on. You're already there for the time. So what I'm getting ready to do is to just to help you identify as a prophet. The road ahead. The only people you're going to be able to deal with ahead is those that need you and those that hate you. The rest of the people don't matter. Jesus, my God. The people going to need you. It's going to hate you. The people that hate you is going to keep you consecrated. Come on. Yeah. Because if you don't stay consecrated, you're going to go crazy. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Because the life of a prophet is just like this, man of God. The life of the prophet, you have to learn the strategies. To be able to live like a natural man, mm. but still act like a God. Yeah, act like a God. Come on, God. Yeah. Wow. And it's gonna be crazy, but it's gonna come with wisdom. Yeah. It comes yeah. with nothing. This, this thing, this thing, what it does, I'm saying real quick, before you get the wisdom, it's gonna make you backslide. Come on. <laughs> You're gonna run away from God. You're gonna take up a whole lot of stuff. Yeah. Because you're gonna be right <laughs> a lot of times. But you being right is not the real answer. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Come on yeah. Because some things will happen just to show you who you're not. Yeah. Come on. Come on. And he'll teach you how to balance. Yeah. You made a balance work, you made a balance a family, you made a balance ministry. Yeah. And this one thing I'm going to leave with this real quick. With this calling on you, it's not head uh, strong. It's not. Come uh, on. Uh, uh, what did you say in the old days? Uh, top, top heavy. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's not top heavy. When you go to really walk on this call, it's going to make you humble. Yes. Yeah. And it's going to keep you in a place of consecration. So now you ain't just spiritual all the time. Yes. Yeah. You're walking in a spirit form. Yeah. That part. See, it ain't just you spiritual. Demons and devils can be spiritual. Yeah, yeah. But you walking in a place with God that God can reach and get you at a time. Put you in a, he can put you in a fight at a time. And sometimes he don't want you to be in a fight. That's, That's right. right. <laughs> he can have you by the fight, but it ain't your fight. Yeah. Yes. 
Don't be the type of prophet be looking for everybody's fight. Come on. My first thought is, everybody got sick, I thought I had to pray for them. Yeah. Yeah. And after about two years, I couldn't walk. Yeah. Come on. So I had everybody mess on me because I didn't know how to get this stuff off of me. But then nobody teach me how to get, watch this. They talk, watch this here. The spirit will teach you how to lay hands. But it don't teach you how to get off the mess off of you. The, teach, the spirit will teach you how to repent for what you've done. But when you have done nothing through ignorance, you walk around with other folks suffering when you wonder why you can't get free because you got somebody else's spirit on you. It just whips it now. After 20 some years, and I started from nothing. People would teach me nothing. Back in hand, shout, speaking tongues and all this. And I found out, I found out later on, if I didn't clap, if I didn't speak in tongues, I still need to know God. And once I started knowing God, I didn't have to speak in tongues because speaking tongues just a conversation. That's why I'm where you at now, man, of God. I'm getting ready to release you. From the old assignments. From the wound. Your mama didn't know what she was carrying. Yeah. Sure. Your daddy didn't know what he put in your mama. But God knew. These were two unusual people to put together to get a prophet. They were too hard for you. Come on here. And all of a sudden, here you come. Come on, here. And all of a sudden, today, you and your meeting classified as a prophet. How do that happen? How do you take Rosie, come on, here, and, and leave her on and make a prophet? Can't nobody do it with God. So, it's going to release you. I said this very briefly. They're going to come after you. But when you know who you are, you've been born again. Yes, God. You've been birthed in ministries, but you never have accepted ministry. You've been doing what you was told, you're doing what you feel. And you mastered that. But it's been a season under this apostle, this woman of God. That he had to kill you. Come on. And then you had to go back through the womb. That's why you have a mixed feeling. You can call her mama in something there. It's a dual relationship. I feel like she's my mom. But then she's something there. That's why she's been so hard on me. Because you know your potentials. She got your best back. She got your, your best interests. Amen. Amen. We're going to move on. Yes, God. Father, we thank you. He's been anointing our apostle. The other apostle and release him and got him. Got him looking in the right direction at the right thing. He's been released and got the sword back on him. Now he, he, he got his fight too. And now, Father, I release him from the attacks. From the womb. All of the attacks that was put together, oh God, in strategies. Man, to keep him from getting to where he is now. I pray with the Lord. As a man of God with wisdom, I release wisdom. And knowledge on him. I speak to his immaturity that he was thought maturing. No more pacifies. No more bottles. Give him meat now. Give him meat. He can handle meat. Thank you now, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.
Stand up. Yes. Get him up. means fresh. Though you have been walking in the office, this new walk is fresh to you. And your oil is for you first. Like Isaiah said, chapter 1, he preached. We know him to be a preacher. Around chapter 6, he said, I'm unclean. So you've been where you at.
direct word from God. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Can we present them or do we wait? Not yet. Wait. Okay. Yeah. Beautiful. Y'all just be patient with us. Amen. This is special for them. Leave it to her. Come on, prophetess. Yes. We're going to go in the same order. talking to me about you. The scripture that he gave me was Isaiah 50 and 4. He said, the hath giving you the tongue of the learned, that you should know how to speak a word in session to him that is weird. He awake the morning by morning. He awakened your ear to hear what is learned. The learned means that your interpretation and understanding and skill is heightened because he downloads in you daily. Where some people are struggling to be taught, he teaches you by downloading the data in you. So you are already learned. Sometimes you struggle because you just try to figure everything out. And it's already figured out in you. But you just got to learn to let go and let God do God in you. What God is getting ready to bring you to. What he's getting ready to do in you. He says, 2 Timothy 4 and 2. He charges you to preach the word because your interpretation of the scripture is not like anybody else's. I can give you a scripture and you can pull the prophetic because you know how to go in and hear. God says to keep your ears in tune with him and not be caught up and conformed by the things of the world because there's a lot of people that are pulling on you because they see the gift that's in you and they want to exploit the gift. So the charge that I give you is to preach in season and out of season. You are not preaching to laymen, you are preaching to leaders. You are prophet to the nation because what God is getting ready to do in you. Remember, I called you the fireball because the things that God is doing in you is so phenomenal that it's like a phoenix and God has combined all of your characters and he's putting it into a place where you can learn how to be able to handle it and be what he needs you to be at the time and the season when he needs it. That's why I always say now, get out of your feelings. Get out of your emotion. What's in your mouth has the power to make a break. You have to be careful what you release because it'll manifest quickly. That's why God said, be careful who you pray for. There are certain ones he won't even allow you to deal with. He had to turn your heart because your heart had got to a place where you had become so wounded and afflicted that it was coming out through your prophetic. So God had to go in and seal and resurgery your heart and heal you back and bring you back to that place because you had got lost for a minute. But God said, I'm bringing you back. I'm bringing you back. He said, because what I'm doing in you is extraordinary. What I'm releasing in you is nothing that no man can get or understand. Only he can give. He's going to tell you when to move and when not to. Apostle said, as times, you got to be quiet. And people think you're trying to be funny because you're being quiet. God said, but I shut your mind for a reason. Because of the power that has, the, the ability that what comes out can bring devastation. 
So I have to sometimes quiet you down. I have to sometimes pull you back. Sometimes you have cave moments and you don't understand why your moments are cave, but I keep saying it's okay, babe, go in now. See, you gotta have a cave time because in the cave is where you're being refortified. It's where you're being strengthened. So it's okay to have a Elijah moment, but you can't stay there. You gotta go there, get what you need, and come back out. Because the nation is waiting on you. So I release. Good morning. Let it burn. There's healing. I, 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 I
healing that's possessed within you. And when you touch, God is going to heal them immediately. Your vision and your hearing is so impact, so good to the point where you can see the diagnosis and you tell them and they go tell the doctor. That's how sharp you are. But God said you got to stay in the place of control. Allow him to continue to teach and pour into you because you're the vessel that will never get full. And he will continue to give everything that he has in you. The very simple thing 
that seems like it is minute, God will show you the intensity of that thing and you know exactly how to pivot the warfare that's in it and to what? Root up and to tear it out and to destroy. But you also have that gentleness to be able to restore with your mouth. Years ago, years ago, didn't quite understand it, and I don't release this to, matter of fact, I don't think I've released it to anyone. But God gave me a word. He said, you are a warrior's woman. You are a woman that's anointed to root up and root out infections of rusty soul. Come on here, Jesus. And because they, the reason that they are rusted is because they have not been trained properly. They have just read a word, and that's not that they were not called to be a prophet, but they have not been changed. And I understand that we give reverence to where reverence is, and they say prophetess, but God say, I call you a prophet, a prophet. unto the nations, unto territories, that's why you're not called to every territory. But God strategically will call you to territories that needs to battle. And you have the weaponry in your mouth to sabotage and to annihilate and to uproot it. And you have the eyesight, my God, hind eyesight. To be able to see deeper than the finest grain. To see deep in. To know that you can see when the venom of the snake has been released. You have the power and the authority to snatch it in the atmosphere. As the prophet of God, the word says that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. But God said you have the power as the prophet and the authority to pull it in the atmosphere that it not even form. You come out of shape because God will show it to you because you're able to see. You're not one that can just look up on something, but you see it. And there is a difference within it. And again today, God said he wants you to know that he releases this authority and you will walk in it with confidence Glory to God. Sometimes confidence seems like arrogance, but it's not. It's just confident in what God has spoken. Because of the trial, the process, I'll put it that way, the process that you endured, it has equipped you to be able, my God, to use the authority as a prophet of God. So yes, we can go into different houses, uh, different other people houses, and they call you prophetess, that's fine. You know who you are. You are the prophet of God. He is this day anointed you as a prophet unto the nations. See, I called you even before you was in your mother's womb. I already established you as a prophet unto nations, into territories, cities, states, countries. God will allow your feet to tread upon foreign soil. And when you thread upon those foreign soil, many things that people say concerning foreign soil that you can't do this or you can't. God said that the confidence that you have in God, which is the authority and the faith that you have in God, you would not be distracted of your focus being broken because of every a witch, a warlock, would not be able to penetrate the authority of the prophet that God has given you on this day. Hallelujah. I'm going to anoint you on today. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let me see which one of these that God would allow to anoint you with. 
My God, hallelujah. Mm. Abba. Meaning Father. The Father anoints you as a prophet unto the nations. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Prophet, I want you to to anoint. There's a double quote. Oh, 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 so much. He's a command. So coach, a cabas, a living share. Simon, the video, so coach, shake your babas. Now let me lay my hands and you put your hand on top of mine. He's a cabas. He's a candele, oh, coach, a man, the day, Catalinosa. Raman, the new the Father Abba seals you. Ikabase, Ikande de Okoche, Raman de Okoche, Banan de Niosi, Ikande Ete Oso Kosha Nalamasi. God said He released even another tongue that will come upon you. There's another tongue. Hallelujah. There is another warrior's tongue. That he come out. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You're going to know that when you find yourself amongst witches and warlocks, there is another warrior's tongue that will begin to rise in your belly. It may not always speak out, but it will rise up in your belly. In the your sire, that when you open your mouth, it will sabotage. It will sabotage. It will sabotage, says the Lord, and cancel. And then it will release. Restoration. God said there's even a word that you would release life to death. Life to death. Life to death. Life where death is. Where the enemy has spoke death. Where the enemy has spoke curses of death. God said, I'm empowering you. There's an importation. Glory to God. To speak to death and command it to live. Hey! In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I don't know, I know I don't have enough breath, but I need somebody to blow this. Hallelujah. Yeah. Who, who will? Who's going to blow? You, can you blow this over her? Well, let me pray with you so the anointing will come upon you. an alert unto you that you will hear 
hot controversy. And you will know that that is the timing of God. In Jesus' name. Apostle, I just wanted to obey. He blew. He blew. Somebody say he blew. Amen. This is wonderful. I heard the Lord say, Prophet, He said, This is the time now that you can let go the dual personality. Come on. Because you was forced into singleness. You had to raise a child. And through that, you took on the nature of a man. Because as a protector, you begin to really watch and guard yourself and guard your daughter. And what it did, it pushed you into a hard place. Because of the pain. Come on, yeah. But apostle spoke to the pain. Come on, yeah. So I'm gonna ask your daughter to come. come on. Eva. Yes, come on. And just catch your mom by the hand and just say, Mom, we have made it through it. Oh, yes, come. You don't have to be that anymore. Yes. I'm a young lady now. And you have taught me well. Now you can go to the next level. You've been dedicated to protect her. But through your dedication, your dedication has paralyzed you. But today we release you. Your calling and your guilt have gotten you in position. You don't have to be the mama in the day. You should be transformed back into the mama. Because sometimes God allows you to birth something that you can't raise. Sometimes people put, put, put a, the deposit in and say, okay, well, okay, I deal with the father, I deal with this, no, no, no. It's because I got a special calling for this child. Yes. Because there's a special calling for that child. Yes. A lot of times when God was talking to her, but because of your pain, you protected her even from God. He said, but today, I'm getting ready to cause you to shift. He said, I've heard your prayers. He said, I've heard you. He said, I'm getting ready to bring completion into your life. You don't have to worry about the fruit in the garden. Because when you get ready to go, that enemy won't be there no more. Most of them say, the, the, the enemy you see now, and you're coming out, and you see now, you won't see it no more. He said, if some things I deal with, you never deal with no more. So, if I get rid of it, I want you to get rid of it. Some things we don't want to get rid of. And even after God has gotten rid of it for us, we still want to deal with it. But after today, you get ready to release the pain. What he did is still tormenting you. What he said in the midst of your exodus is still torment you. But after the day, you will be able to release it. It don't even matter no more. I got what I birthed. It is not what I lost, it's what I got left. Come on, Jesus. Jesus. Just squeeze your hand, that's what you got left. Jesus. Just squeeze your hand and say, this, this is what I got left. Yeah. It ain't what I lost in it. Ooh, glory. Yes, God. It's what I got left. Those 
that was close to you that talked about you like a dog and it, it made you feel like this, but now you finna be exalted. And when they come seeking prayers, you won't even have a prayer to pray. Because it's the same God they've been building against. You can't go to the God and get a release. Amen. Amen. They can rebel and be disobedient to the same God you're serving. So they'll come to you after prayer. It won't work like that. God said, when I cut them off, I cut them off. And I want you to let them go. That was a word spoken over your life. Thank you. Just give me a little tamarind and a few napkins. Give me, give me, give me five napkins. She need to ball up real quick, and then we can move on. Five little napkins. Five napkins. Because it's five seeds that you need to release. Come on. It's five seeds. There you go. Five seeds. There's five of them. I want you to make five balls. Just five balls. Because it's five seeds. What are you saying, Apostle? Because you're supposed to be out for a long time. You put me out five seasons ago. Five seasons ago. Come on, girl. Why is five five full ministry? Five five is grace. Come on. God said, I, I, I opened the door. Come on here. I heard the woman of God. So the door's been opened. But what had happened? You've been dwelling on the pains. Yeah. You've been trying to fix something that can't be fixed. Come on. What can't be fixed, fix you. And it's still messed up. So now you're going to have to release yourself from what was designed to destroy you. Oh, he could have made it too. But he chose. He chose not to correct it. Sin kills a person's spirit. And when your spirit is dead, you can't hear from God. And if you can't hear from God, you can't be led by God. Yeah. Folks are speaking and talking, they got the Holy Ghost. Uh -uh, if your spirit dead, you can't hear from God. God deals with your spirit. He don't deal with your mind and intellect. It's your spirit he communicates. That's why you got to be filled with the spirit. And as a prophet, that's your, that's your number one thing. I got to keep my spirit right. I don't care if you don't like me. I don't care if I ain't got no money. Man, I'm going to keep my spirit right. That's why you had to be anointed with Adam. Oh, oh, because God for the place a father. Because she was stripped from the protection of a father. You got put right in the hands of a man and bypassed a father. The father teaches you how to deal with a man. Anointing on you, you to draw the Father. Yeah. And now you're shifting in your right position now. Come on, you, you're not playing the double role. Now you can become a mama. So now that's come your unity. That come your soulmate now. The soulmate gonna have the Father anointed on it. People can't even see your body because God has covered you up. Yeah. That's why at certain times you get frustrated when you don't get noticed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not telling you, but I know him. Why, 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 why ain't nobody say, he ain't say, you walk past me, he didn't say nothing. Because God said, I got you here. I got you here yeah. right now. Because if I had to, I'm the one know where you're at. He just finds a wife, finds a good thing. And this call is going to shift you in a position where you ain't got to hide no more. But he can expose you until you release these five seasons. Ball of the first one, that's your childhood. <laughs> Ball it up and throw your childhood away. You don't need your childhood no more. Yes. 
You don't need to be holding on to stuff when you were six, seven, eight, nine, ten years old. You don't need to be holding on to stuff like that. Somebody stole your mind. Somebody, somebody took your boyfriend. No, that's all. Now, now you're stepping into the real of the prophet of God. Now you got to learn how to forget and forgive and keep a moving. Yeah. 
Is she one of these serious? You see her in there playing with a crayon? But you know, you, you see her coming serious. But then the season come when you walk out of that immature the little girl, now you become a woman. You have to appreciate your childhood, but don't be controlled by it. That's it. Make sense? Yeah. I don't know whatever you pick here, Apostle. Just pick something here. What is it? What is it? There's our pick another one right there. Let's 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 do this here. Let's do this here. Let me see that change. Yeah. Yeah. Let me see. I'm just going. I'm just going to take this. This. You see this here. This is what you're going to live by. Come on, Come on. Ah. <laughs> You're going to live by the cross. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Because when you understand, woman of God, yeah. what happened on that cross, yes. nothing else matters. Yes. 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 Nothing else matters. Yes. Nothing else matters. Yes. Nothing, else yes. matter. yes. nothing else matters. Yes. Thank you, Pastor. So, Father, we thank you right yes. now. Thank you right now. Yes, Lord. I'm going to reach and get, as they say in the country, the last part of you out. Come on. Go get it. I'm going to get you out of there, cuz. You don't need to be in there no more. Come on. Jesus. You've been trying to protect you. That's God's job. That's why you get so irritated when something come against your daughter, you snaps. Yes. But now he's gonna take you out of that. Yes. Because he gonna be the one that's fighting on your behalf. Yes. <laughs> right now, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. He said, I'm gonna release you from the very molecule of sin. The very part of sin that would even influence you, you feel to become dead to sin. Smooth talking, slick talking, that ain't gonna mean nothing. When your apples show up, he gonna show up with results. And you gonna know him. You gon' know him. Cause you gon' know who your father is. Yaba, yes, God. I break the generation that's been upon the women in your family. I cut that soul tie away. You like to dominate a conversation because you don't want to re 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 be rejected. So you take over the conversation. God said, you don't have to do that no more. Today, in the name of Jesus, I release you. I release you. I release you from you. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Receive it today. Jesus' name. Amen.
let this all be an example to all of us having to come behind with the word from God. Yeah. Yeah. Behind oracles of God. Yeah. 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 You still got to be able to hear from, from God. God. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And before it even started, the Lord told me to tell you to take some days to yourself. Yeah. For so long, you have become the feminine and the male yes. part of you. Come on, yeah. come on. And God said, no more. Yeah. You have been submissive to that masculine part of yourself. Yeah. God said, let it go. And now submit yourself unto my word. Wow. There's a such thing as self-knowledge. Yeah. Yeah. And you have been submitting yourself to the things you have learned. Throughout the years, yes. God say, "Now I need you to submit to my word, my father, and every on. word that comes forth out of your mouth will not return unto me void, yes. but it will do what you sent it out to do." Yes. No longer you, yes, no longer. you have mastered yes. being who everybody wants you yes. to be. But God say you are a woman, a woman of God. You don't have to, as Apostle said, you don't have to do it by yourself anymore. Allow him to be who he is in your life. And that's God. Amen. Amen. Y'all just got me excited. Oh, God. Come on, come on. It's the last prophet for this part. Come on, Victoria. Come on. Can somebody bring a chair? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. sister, but she became my intercessor. God told me that she was sent to me, for me. And God would have her praying for me, because I always knew God had particular and set intercessors in place. 
But, you know, sometimes you don't ever get a chance to know your intercessor. So I took it personally, amen. amen. I put claim on it and say she my intercessor. <laughs> I knew that she was because there were a lot of things she was taking is that didn't even come close to me. And God revealed to me exactly who and what she was and what her sole purpose with me was. See, when you understand the assignment and you go fulfill it, God will show you the connection and what did the connection is truly. And so our connection is truly divine. But what God told me is because you are definitely a prophetic intercessor, he says that he can trust you to pray and cover leaders. He said you're not biased. He said you're sound. Yes. He trusts you with the word. Yes. And then when you release it, you'll have no feelings. <laughs> the same way you came in, you go right back out. Yeah. She came yeah. to my church one time and prophesied and had my people live. <laughs> <laughs> but it wasn't nothing she said it wrong. What she said was absolutely true. It was absolutely true. She told me when and who it exactly was. And they did. Yeah. And I wasn't even bothered by it because God sent her to prepare me yeah. for that part. So then I knew that our connection was going to be even more. But what God gave me was Ephesians 4, 11, and 12. Yeah. And he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. God said, you've been standing in your comfortability too long. You've been happy being an evangelist. Because all you had to do was just preach. But God said, it's more and the time and the season is now. He says that now he has to raise you to the place. And it's time for you to take on the identity and the new name that he has given you. I told you in a conversation that before he can come up, you got to come up. My God, my God. Because you're going to be the one that helps bring him. Mm -hmm. And that you have to be in the place, in the position. You're not just an elect lady. You're not just an evangelist. You are a prophet. And you have to now embrace the call. You have to walk in it. You still have the evangelistic spirit, but you are the prophet, and it's time for you to come to that place. You got to come out of your comfortability because God is going to change the dynamic of your understanding and your tradition. It's no longer how it used to be. It's about what it's going to be now. And God says, even through your visions and your dreams, because you dream, I know you dream. But the dreamers are now going to come in a completeness. Where you were dreaming parts, you're not going to be dreaming the whole. The message is also in the dream, but it's also in what he says to you in your prayer time. You're consistent in prayer. You have a Daniel spirit when it comes to prayer. And you are relentless. When it's time, it's time. And you commit everything to that. And God says he honors that in you. Because when you know it's time to be with you, sure, you spend that time with him. And you don't let nothing and nobody get in your way. And that's the thing that God wants. God says there is a newness that's about to take place. The newness is in you. Because the newness that he has to bring in you is going to help him to understand the full purpose of what he is. He's pastor by name. He's elder by name. But where God is getting ready to bring you, you have to bring him too. Sometimes we get caught and listen to me, and I don't never man bash. Never man. But sometimes God has to send the woman to help bring the man into the place. God said that we are to cover our husbands. And so you have covered him, but God is getting ready to elevate and he has to elevate you so that you can help continue to cover him. Because where God is going to show you is where God is getting ready to take both of y'all. So the dynamics of your understanding is about to change. You've got to open up and learn more. There's more that you need 
There is more. See, dad has set the foundation, but dad is gone. It has to be a new covering oh that God has called you to find. He, Jesus is the chief, but you got to find that person that can continue to pour into you yes. what it is, the things that God wants you to know. He'll give it to you, but he also yeah. gives it through the mouthpiece of the authority. So you've got to get into the place of the authority and you've got to let God show you who your covering is. Mama can't do it no more. Her seasons are beyond her. Ah. My God. She has done well. But God said her season. You know. You know. He been talking to you. Yeah. So it's time. Some changes have to be made. And even though you're not the eldest of the family, you're the strongest of the family. You're the most sound in the family. You're the most reason of the family. You are the matriarch of sound. Reasoning and of spirit. And the spirit that's in you, God said it is that time. He has to raise that spirit. Because guess what? If you stay in the position you're in, they're not going to get it. They're not going to get it. He got to shake your comfortability up so you can shake theirs up. My God. So this is that season for what he's about to do in you. So with that being said, I want you to know that your teaching is enhanced. Your hunger is supposed to be acquired more. Your palate is supposed to change. Your taste is changing. What you desire has to be greater and more because there's a fountain waiting to be filled. And he's ready to pour into you like he's never poured before. If you thought he trusts you then, I God. Watch what he's going to do now. God told me that when I get my millions, because they come, and y'all hear me prophesying to myself, my child. <laughs> For real. Before my millions was even thought about, God told me that hope would be the one that would have my money. Y'all better come out there. That's how well he trusts you. That's how well he trusts you. He trusts you with other people's stuff. But most of all, he trusts you with his secrets. His intimate secrets. Because you are trustworthy. Wow, God. So open up fountain and let him pour. Take your seat. Listen, I'm going to do this one. I've got time to be reading them little old. <laughs> I'm just being obedient. <laughs> this is pure virgin oil. And the reason why I'm, he told me to use this one is because your heart is pure. Ah, yeah. yes, God. And because your mind ah. is about to appear in him. Oh. And he's about to purify your spirit. Oh, so I'm going to damn your ears. Ah. See, no, 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 no. Shake up by your nose. And I release a hunger in you and a desire that God, you sure will give you all that you acquire in him. That he will fill you to the fullest. Your hearing is about to come with sharper than ever before. What he's about to show you is going to be complete. No more pieces. Complete. Where you couldn't see faces and you were seeing shadows, you're going to see identity. Yeah, he said to purify your eyes. Ah, yeah. yeah, no, 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 Purify your eyes because your vision is about to change. Yeah. You will not see in depth. Ah, speak about you. Yeah, no, 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 Yeah, yes, 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 yes. Your hearing is about to be shown. Yeah, he's enhancing your senses right now. Yeah, no, 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 no. 
see bye bye. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. He's even in tune in your periphery. Uh huh. Yeah. You gonna see the snarls and the trap before they ever get laid. You gonna be able to call it out and pray against it. Your crap gonna shut it down before it can even come to manifestation. That's how powerful God is gonna bring you into. Uh huh. Your intercessory. Yes. You are powerful weapon. And you are vital to the kingdom. Yes. And he has you praying and cover. Some of the leaders don't even know you covering them. They don't even know. But they don't know you saving their lives. Ah! See, my God. All the doors that you have took on their behalf. My God. But God said, you know how to dress in warfare. And when you go in, you go in full. So come up, raise up, rise up, and allow God to give you the fullness of everything that he wants you to have. How about you? None of us say, Apostle Warren, say, Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Pure. She. Pure. Amen. I say unto you, woman. That every king need a prophet. Yes. Every king need a prophet for direction in the war. Yes. That every prophet need a king. Yes. Every king need a prophet. That every prophet need a king. Yes. I'm gonna tell you what the spirit of the Lord said to. Came from that place that was unauthorized. Uh, Come on, sir. Uh, 
And the part of, at the end of the scripture, it says, where you were rejected, you will be accepted. Because God is changing the very continent of your facial expressions. He needs to do that. Because of the places that he will send you. Your continence has to change. Glory to God. Your perspective of how people see will change. It will give you the access. Because you still have to remember we live in a world with people. So God will change your appearance to people to get you into the doors that he needs you to get into. But the vocabulary will still be there. He's just changing the continent of your word. The, the hearing of how it's presented. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And every time that you walk into the different levels that God will bring you into, this is just one level that God is going to give you access to. There are levels to come. Hallelujah. That you will walk into. But each time that you walk into another level, there's another uh, continent. Your continent begins to change. Your vocabulary begins to change. How you say things begin to change. How you articulate it. Why? Because you sit at the feet. Hallelujah. And when you sit at the feet, God will give you heavenly vocabularies. But when you get, when they translate here on earth, my God, you will be able to articulate them into the everyday language of the people. But when you get it, you will see it in a different dimension. But it will articulate to relate to the people that you would deal with or you would minister to or you would uh, bring a word to. So you no, you no longer will be rejected. Because there are many times that God is giving you a word that people reject instead of accepting it. Hallelujah. And it's just comes with seasoning. You know, when we walk through a season, we walk through different processes, and God teaches us how to have a seasoned word. Not That doesn't mean that the word is, uh, uh, you know, so great. It means that it has seasoning in it, where the person is able to receive it. It is the right word, but it has to be what? Spoken in the right manner in order for it to be received. And we all go through that. Amen. Amen. But this is your time. And it is amazing. It amazes me. And I give God glory for what Apostle said. That I didn't know who was bringing you where. But I did see there is a changing of the gods. Yes. And it's not a bad thing. Yes. But there are times that people can only, only bring you to that destination that God has predestined. And it's not that nothing is wrong with them or anything to that sort. It's just that they have brought you as far as they can. And then God brings you to another elevation, to another part, uh, should I say another blueprint that is on, you know, another part of the blueprint that God has established for you to be able to walk in. And you would never be able to walk in it if you don't step out and walk to it. Hallelujah. So it is a good thing. But you are all, that will always, I tell people all the time, I don't care how many mentors and that you will come across, you will always have one mother. You will always have one father. You will have many mentors because God will bring you. And they will come in the form of overseers and apostles. But there's always one father and always one mother that nobody can replace. I don't care how great that they can bring you. It will always be one mother and always one father. So they're not being left behind. 
It's just that it's time for you, somebody say, to grow and to mature. From where you think. Because if we never get out of our place that we are familiar with, we'll never be able to advance to where God wants us to be. I'm gonna say this and then I'm gonna let this mic go. I hear the Lord say, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of men, of the great things that God has in store for you. And then he goes back to say, he said, your eye have not seen, your heart have not even been able to engraft it, and your ear have been blocked to the place where you could not hear. But as of this day, because of the authority that has been released upon you, the anointing that has been released upon you, the access that has been released upon you, you're going to see the great things that God would do in you and through you. That is the word of the Lord unto you on today. Amen. Amen. I don't have to anoint you again yeah. because God says you are, you've been anointed. Yeah, you have. You have been anointed and, and what I was going to do has already been done. Yeah. Hallelujah. Y'all pick it up for the sake. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Because the cross is truly where your purpose lies. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Amen. My God, man, this is this is better than a lot of official services I've seen. Amen. Amen. But I want to say a few things. Just a few things, from the God. You had to. God put a double portion of anointing on you to carry Him. Yes. Well, God's gonna take you the anointing for the ship, and He's gonna get in His rightful place. Yes. yes. He's gonna rise up to be a great man of God. Yes. It won't be a, a, a struggle in his spirit. Like things have happened over the years in the marriage and stuff like that. Because when God tried to get you to top out, he wasn't ready to go ahead and commit to what he needed to be doing. But there's a change in him now. Yes. As you see him change, don't fight him for the second space. Yes. Yes. That's good. Come on, there. That's good. <laughs> If he wants the chicken leg, yeah. give him the chicken leg. Yeah. Give it to him. All right. All right. Don't fight for the chicken leg. <laughs> because if you if you have cooked the chicken, you can eat chicken whenever you want to cook it. Eat it whenever you want to eat it. Yeah. You hear what I'm saying? My God, that's good. But one of your biggest battles that you are dealing with, you're so simple. Yeah. And what is happening, God is bringing you out of simplicity. Come on. Yes, that's it. That. You want to stay simple. So yeah. <laughs> I know how you feel. Everybody, everybody you want to, you want to keep eating the green, but you don't, you know, you want to just, you know, I, I, I don't know, Lord, I don't need all of that. Yeah, yeah. 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 Come on, now. Yeah. 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 That's exactly what she said. But God needs you to be all of that. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, come on. Yeah. And when you kind of run away from it, you let him, you say this to him, you made me, you developed me, but I don't need that, so why are you giving me that? Yeah. He gives you that because of the call. Yeah. Yeah. Apostle Warren was saying that a lot of people want to keep you local, yeah. but you will be global, you will be yeah. international. Yes. 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 But it will be both of you. I was sitting there, and he said, do you remember the same spirit of the anointing that was on Juanita Bynum? Yeah. See, there was an anointing on Juanita Bynum. Yes, it was. it was. Then there was a spirit on Juanita Bynum. Yeah. 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 Yeah is a bona fide intercessor. Yes, she uh, is. Yes, yes. And her ministry was, it was birthed out of intercessor. Yes, she yes, was. Yes, it was. But she got famous. Yes, she yes. Yeah. That's 
Some of us gonna be famous. Yeah, uh, Jesus. Jesus. Come on. That's why we've been delayed. Yeah. Because everybody can't handle being famous. Right. Can't handle it. Right. Some of the simplest people. Don't want to be famous. You want to be simple. Certain type of car. Lord, I like my house, but I got a big house for you. But now I just like this little house right here. I'm going to get paid for it. I don't have no. I can just I fix my little stuff in the bathroom. And I can take this up. No, I ain't. Uh-uh, uh-uh. I put my flowers out in here and straight down. He said, no, 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 no. That's going to be for an inheritance. Because where you're going now is going to reflect him. Come on here. A lot of times we hinder God yes. because we are uh, uh, examples for yes. others. Yes. And we're That's real right. afraid to walk in it. Then what God is saying to him, I can't release the foolishness because yeah. you just want to be simple. I just want to know. Yeah. None of us is simple. None or normal. Normal when you cross over because yeah. there's no more of us. There's no more of us there. You know what I'm then coming from the, the previous church, I don't know if you, you grew up in a, you know, uh, under the tutor of your father, mother, in ministry, or someone with that type of way. You no longer have to try to cover up for them. That's right, Jesus. It's time for you to go up. It's got to. It's got to. You don't have to cover up for them. You don't have to fill in the gaps. You don't have to get to church early. You got, oh, go somebody in there, back me. Feels like I get it back. Though. They ain't get this, these toilets clean. They ain't. So you found yourself more of a servant. Mm -hmm. uh, it's and you never shift to be a son. My God, that's good. He gonna raise up other servants while he's shifting you into the sonship. Meaning, you coming into one of the anointed ones. Yes. Your whole role gonna change. So don't be afraid to go up with him. Don't be afraid of him. Don't be afraid. Because he will never leave you. Yes. Nor will he forsake you. Just like he was there to get your first car, he gonna be there to get your next car. Yes. Yes. So like he helped you to pay these bills, yes. at the next level he gonna help you to pay the bills too. Yes. But your understanding gonna be a whole lot better now. You won't be trying to play catch up. Yes. You see, you don't have to play that no more. What's happening here today is putting you in a position, and anytime anybody calls somebody, they always reject the call for a season. Then he shut down everything else, and he get a yes out of you. When you to <laughs> yes, he will. Oh, yes, he, he will. God always get his way. Yes, he will. Yes, he is. He said you're going to do two things. Yep. You preach on Preach on earth, or you preach in hell. Uh -huh. He said, "You still, you gonna preach? That's right. You gonna <laughs> preach? If you're a preacher, you gonna preach. Yeah. And every preacher have to have a relationship with God, and every preacher got a message. Uh -huh. See, there's different levels. Don't run from me no more. What's your name, my brother? We close. Sure. Kevin. She finna get sweeter." <laughs> <laughs> Yes, Lord. You hear me? Come on. Huh? <laughs> She's going to get sweeter. She's going to get sweeter. That's good. Because the reason I said that prophetically is because she been <laughs> wrestling with this change. Yeah. Yeah. And anytime a prophetic person is wrestling with a change, they get disobedient. They get grouchy. They get frustrated because now they're dealing with stuff from heaven and earth. My but God. now she's coming to the acceptance. She's going to change now. Because now she see her identity. She don't have to be like none of us. That's right. She's going to see herself now. Uh, you see what I'm saying? She ain't going to be tossing all the time in the bed. She ain't going to be getting irritated. When you're going around the house and look like nobody never paid attention to that when you're frustrated, that's because you're trying to settle. You're trying to settle between who you was and who you are now. Today you made that decision, that's why you're here. It's going to get easy now. Make sense? Congratulations. Congratulations. Welcome to, yes, uh, 
as you know, uh, I had for you the oil of, I hope I said it right, cassia. Yeah. Uh-huh. It makes sense now, the spirit of humility set apart. Wow. Never knew oh. what um, any of the apostles were going to say. I had all this stuff before. Wow. Uh, <laughs> since you have unauthorized access. That's good. Since you will no longer be hidden but seen. Wow. There's a new spirit, there's a spirit of humility. Humility God is expecting on you. Because you do walk like that. You you would come in, say something, and leave. Joe, do it. You know, you're gonna have a new fragrance, you're gonna have to stay there. Yeah. You have to be right. not in the back, but in the front. Yeah. And because you're able to see further than some of them are allowed to. That normally has us with a certain attitude. Only if we be honest, but we agree that when God shows us stuff about other people, it makes us feel a certain way. Yeah. That's yeah, we feel that's true. not only special, but we do carry a cockiness, apostle. Oh, yes, we do. Yeah. So not that you wasn't already. He said he's going to put a new fragrance of humility on oh, you, sister. Come on. Praise the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> when I tell you, apostle, just oh my God, he just be all in it. But God just showed me over there. Prophet was bothered when he said, I'm going to put you. I said, I have to be accurate. God said, as of today, you will no longer be anonymous. Tell her she ain't CIA no more. God said, there is things he had for you, but because you did not want to make him known through you, you didn't. So God says, of today, you will no longer be anonymous, but you will profess and proclaim and you will let them know. You better come on. Because we have to understand that we ask God for things, and often those things have to come from individuals. Yes, that's right, that's right. But if they don't know, how can they? You're hindering somebody else's obedience. Yes, that's true. So as of today, today, you will no longer be anonymous. Everybody knows you. Everybody knows you. Everybody knows you. Everybody knows you. Come on, evangelist. Listen, I'm going to change up just a little bit, okay? Uh, me and Dad going to do evangelists because. She knows. And then we're going to do the apostle. Amen. 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 Look at here, little firecracker. <laughs> this one right here is a little firecracker. This is my little firecracker. It's my Oklahoma firecracker. Amen. When I first saw you, God began to show me some things about you. And he began to show me the power and the fire that's in you. You've been underestimated. You've been took for granted. People really overlook you. They think that because your gift is singing, that that's all that's in you. They have no idea of the fire that's in you. You have the evangelistic spirit. You are a firecracker that when you go in and you preach, you change things. They don't know how you intensify this study. You study, and you study deep. You study to show yourself approved. And you rightly, ah, ah, divide the word. You ain't scared, and you're not worried about what nobody else think. You really strive to live holy and acceptable before God. And you don't mind telling nobody. You're not ashamed of the gospel. And you speak it, it's in your actions, it's in your walk, it's in your character. And when you sing, you sing old fire. You got that old time religion. But God said, listen, tradition has bounded you to a certain level. You were up under an apostolic covering. But because they delayed, they taught you, but they hindered you. They delayed you and they didn't call you where you needed to be. What I thought you were supposed to, what I was supposed to ordain, you guys said, not, not, not just yet. It's coming. I know you saw the prophets, but he told me to redo the evangelist in you. 
to stir the gift and to raise it back to the fullness because when they ordained you, What we're going to do is release that spirit into you. You are going to excel and your prophetic is already in tune. But God said, not just yet, not just yet. I still have evangelistic work for you to do. You're going to shake Oklahoma. You're not going to get the, the, the invitations because they know you. They know you. They don't know your spirit. They just know your name. They know how you act, they know how you walk, and half of them don't want to hear you. Because when you come, you come with truth. And they don't want the truth. Nobody wants to see the mirror, the reflection, because they don't have the maturity to handle what God is telling them in this season. See, you got to be able with the evangelist, listen. When God let me have the evangelistic spirit, when God, God already when, 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 the, when the evangelistic spirit comes up on me, it's like an east wing. God send me in to clean up the debris and I, he just releases a blow and then I walk right back out the same way because it's not about friendship. It's not about trying to gain popularity. I don't even care. You see what I'm saying? I'm unorthodox. They talk about me all the time and I'm okay with that. I'm used to that. I'm really fine with that. I kind of like it. <laughs> <laughs> because the more they talk, the more I pray. And the more they keep me where I need to be in God. So I know who I work for. I know who I serve. I know who I love. And it's not man. I serve man. I serve God. But I serve man through God. From God. And that's what it's about. And that's where you are. That's why it's so easy for you to walk away. Uh -huh. It's a lot of folks going to detach from you. Because what God is going to bring in you and what he's going to do with you. And they're not ready because they're not ready. Because you bring conviction to them. That's what evangelists do. They, they bring conviction. Yeah. They show people who they are. And then they call the lost souls. When I was studying the evangelist, the evangelist lives for the lost souls. Your job is to cry out, send the warning, and draw them back to God. You have to speak the truth. You have to be uncompromising and you have to say what God tells you to say. And when you're done, you're done. Don't add nor take away. So what God gave me. You know what this is? You know, technology is not my friend right now. When the first time God gave me the scripture, I heard this in John 17, 21 through 26. He said, the glory that God has given you caused you to be one in him. The world had no idea who you are and who you are in him. That that's why you are not received. But as the evangelist, you are the one that deals with the people. Ministering to the lost, you are the storyteller. You are the one that ignites the fire with the people. I, you're the one that comes to encourage. You're the one to come to the one that are weary and those that are weak. Your job is to shine the light and show them the way. The message of repentance. Your message is forgiveness, salvation. Your approach should be direct, intelligent, testimonial, relational, invitational, and servitude. Those are the qualities of an evangelist. You have those. You have to array with the gospel with fire and passion. Like Jeremiah 1 and 17, he says, Therefore, gird your laws arise. And speak to them because that has he has commanded you. He said, Do not be dismayed by their faces. Don't be lost. Don't be wearied. And don't wonder. Speak what he tells you to speak. And when you're done, you're done. Don't touch. Don't heal. Don't try to do anything out of the ordinary of what he's called you to do. Just because you have the evangelistic spirit, don't mean you don't have the apostolic understanding. That's the difference. He's going to raise your mindset, but he has to bring you through up because, watch this, your fight is going to get intensified and your fight has been. But the level now that your fight is going to raise to is because it's an opening and it's an understanding now. So now your fight is going to change. It's going to become more, more intensified than it has ever. So what I'm going to release on you Somebody come read these old. 
Rejecting the spirit of God that's in you. Don't take it personal. Understand it comes with the assignment. With every assignment and with every level, there comes another form of opposition and rejection. You're not working unless you first being rejected. You're not working if they're not opposing you. You're not working if everybody is receiving you. If everybody like your message, it ain't right. Because you have to speak. And when you speak, it's going to cause their hearts to be pricked. Because that's what evangelists do. They prick the hearts. They preach to the lost. They preach to the weary. They preach to the wanderers. They preach to those that are just walking around with the vacuum of the spirit that just have no idea where God is trying to bring them. So you are the voice that brings them back. You are the voice that cries out to them. You are the voice that God says he loves you. So when you preach... Preach direct. And I released an anointing, the spirit of courage, so that you can walk tall. Your footsteps are already ordered. They're already ordered. They're already ordered. You have already, God said, you can, He can give you the assignment and you understand it. You understand the assignment and you carry it out. He said, but you do it with such love and passion. You win so, you're so well, you win so. They watch your character. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they watch your character. Yeah, they, they, they don't understand because watch this, they try to keep you quiet because of the power that's in you. But I release the courage for you to go forth and for you to speak with a boldness like never before. You are already bold and the fire is already ignited, but the fire is going to flame to the fullest. So when they see you, they're going to be drawn. Sometimes you ain't going to even have to preach. you just going to draw them by your presence. The singing is just an appetizer. The singing is just an appetizer. It's the word. It's the word that's going to pull. And what's in you, God, is going to get it ready to release it to the fullest. Don't be afraid of what God is getting ready to do. What's that other one? Oh. You are ready to set apart. This is Cassie. This is the oil that is the oil of humility. You walk in a humility, but I'm the more. Humble, humble. Get to the lowest. Evangelists are low. Not in rank, but they're low. In spirit, for it's their humility. Humble yourself. Because every now and then, a little pride will. You see what I'm saying? Humble it. Cover and be clothed in the cloth of humility. And walk in the fullness of it. I anoint your ears. How about you? She, no, 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 say. Yes, 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 ah, yeah, yeah, yes. I hear God say, right here, yes. I, uh, yes. Thank you, God. Yes, 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 yes. 
cloth of humility is on on you. God is going to wrap you up in the format. But watch this. You're getting ready to go through a metamorphosis. And your metamorphosis is already in process. And you're going to start changing a little more and a little more. Remember I told you that our conversation, the word no, no is going to come to a high. They no longer be able to pull on you because you're going to start pushing them. You're going to start pushing them in the direction where you were carrying them, you're not going to let them go. And that comes with sisters. Mm -hmm. They're not going to get to depend on you like they need to be. Because God is going to strip them of their dependency on you and make them independent, make them uh, dependent on him. Yeah, you've been blocking for them. Uh -huh. You've been praying and covering them. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. You done saved them a lot. Uh, yeah, you was their lifeline. Uh-huh. You've been, you been shielding them. Uh-huh. You've been taking hits for your sisters and your people. Uh -huh. But God said, not no more. Thank you, God. Not no more. Thank you, they gonna take their own hits. Because he's gonna reposition you. Because where you finna go, they got to get better. Yeah. Yes, and you got to allow them to make their mistakes. Speak the counsel of wisdom. Release it and let it go. Let God do God. So I release the spirit of you. By the authority, I release the evangelistic spirit to go forth. That you may preach. That you may preach in season, out of season. That you may speak to the lost. That you may speak to those that are aimlessly wandering. That you may draw them, that you may be a beacon of light to draw them until to the place of God in you. Be an example. You already operate in character. Your morals are good and your integrity is there. But God is going to use you to show that there are some leaders that are watching you because they really don't think you are who you are, but they really don't have no idea that your anointing is greater than theirs. But God got to keep you right here in this position of humility. So that when he raised you up to the fullness, you'll be able to receive it. He can't pull too fast, Reese. Because he'll bust. You'll bust if he pull too much. So he got to pull at the pace that you're in. And you're there. And your time is coming. Amen. Amen. Come on, Dad. Apostle, get ready. You're ready. You're next. Ooh. Did you have a word for the evangelist? You, you said, I said, I just want to add, because God is good. Come on, because you're a sweet woman. Yes. But cinnamon also means sweet and spicy, so you got to know how to work both of them. Yeah. Firecrackers. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> My God, my God. I tell you, the first thing I'm going to do is to erase the fingerprints. Come on. Of him that locked you down. Jesus. It's a he in the church locked you down a long time ago. Mm -hmm. And he spoke over the womb. Mm -hmm. And for the last several years, you've been excited, getting pregnant, mm -hmm. but you never could birth. Mm -hmm. So last seven years, it's just going through the format of getting visitations from God and God speaking to you and, and things begin to happen. But the problem was because of the curse, you couldn't birth it. Curse my God. Because he got jealous. Because he couldn't control you. He was immature. You was a little bit more mature than he was. And he didn't, he didn't want to wait until you really get to the place you need to be because you really had his back. So what he did, he went to pray to lock you down. It just unfortunately that he had already possessed and had a lot of authority that you have given him. And so by you trying to reverse it, you couldn't reverse it in time. But today God is going to release him. Glory to God. He's going to release you because 
That's why I haven't, he hasn't been able to bring the right one to you because the wrong one spirit still been around you. Come on, Jesus. Come on, girl. And I understand now why apostle said, okay, we're just going to let apostle say something. You know, the other apostle said, you know, because I was sitting and God told me, he told me what everybody else was supposed to say. He said, we're just going to bring it together. But Apostle Warren is because he's connected to entertainment. You've been delayed, and your ministry of music has been delayed from entertainment. He said, but this is the season after the fingerprints is off. He's getting ready to birth you back because that's a CD. That's music that's supposed to be released. Wow. And that man was a part of the package. But when he began to do what he did, it just shut you down. And so now you go from church to church singing just to stay alive. My God. Jesus. My apostle friend right here, her prophetic message is that you press into the mark of a high call. You know, he says, "Which he says, just let them know that this this high calling you gonna have to press now because what was on you that was fighting against you is no longer there. So mentally, you are gonna have to press when you don't even see nothing. Your cravings, your appetites won't be the same because for the last several years you've been eating and carrying on like a pregnant woman." But you haven't been pregnant. Come on, my Jesus. God. Jesus. He said, but this is the season that you share being spiritually pregnant. Yeah. And you're going to give birth to this thing this year. This yeah. year. Yeah. You're not going through it. But you're going to have to press through it. Jesus. This is with my apostle friends here, the husband and wife. He said, what is happening? Your ministry was a dual ministry. You never was intended to be single or solo. It was always a couple. Because you're unique how you can bounce off of your significant other. When he's there in his rightful place during that time you experience, God, it was a beautiful thing to, as y'all that changed. And it left a void inside. So what David's going to say is that who God puts together, no man ain't going to be able to so it's coming back around again. Oh, then it would kind of bother me a minute, and I said, well, you know, she was mentally, she was getting ready to step into the prophetic, which you're already in the prophetic. Yeah. And it's said, well, you know, her title's not changing. Yeah. And the purpose why your title may change, because you're not a title. That's it. You're a ministry. Yeah. yeah. He gave some of the apostles, prophet, yes. evangelist, pastors, and teacher. Yes. Wherever you had in the fight for, you got to classify yourself within that. Come on, yeah, yeah. And the evangelist is the longest finger. Yes. yes. The apostles can touch all the rest of the ministry. That's why you got to be super humble. Then you got the prophet. That's the point. But the evangelist, that's the one that's got to run. That's the point. Yes. Yeah. Yes. His reason that he's not putting the title of a, 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 a prophet on you at the moment is because where you got to go, he go, he finna cause you to move in Oklahoma undercover. Come on now! Yeah. 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 He yeah. said, because if I allow you to step into the prophetic rim or take the prophetic name, then there's demons gonna fight you because of the name. But long as they see your name the same, you gonna slip through places that they won't even be prepared. They gonna thank you the same this singing, sister. That's yeah. how they stop, sister. That's how they pray, sister. But but in the mix of the service, yes. he gonna speak to your spirit. Yes. And out of your mouth, he's gonna start a prophesying. Yes. Right in the mix of those services. Right 
they can't stop you if they're not prepared. <laughs> you hear what I'm saying? They, they gonna see you come. See, quickly, is that if you come to my church and I know you an apostle and I know you a prophet, yeah. and if I ain't living right, I gotta get myself. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You see, I, I got I got to get myself because I know if you're coming, yeah. the Spirit of God can speak through you. Yeah. 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 But if I'm not expecting you, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. you gonna catch me yeah. and I won't be a prepared. Yeah. Yeah. So that's how easy to cause you to move in this season. Yeah. See, because as you put your life back together, you, you look at everything. Fixing everything, and then all of a sudden you're gonna be back at the top of your game, and then you're gonna go back to the ordination service. Yes, amen. because now they can't fight something yeah. that has already become you. Oh, yeah. You can't stop me from being married when you already got the ring on your finger, the marriage license, and all they said I do. Once that didn't happen, you can tell them I'm a married. I'm a what they say? I'm a married now. I'm some man. I'm some man. No, 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 not that right now. Yeah. He's going to teach you how to do it. I just trust him and follow suit. Amen. But I'm so excited. This had to be the way it was. And the reason why we did the prophets first was because the prophets had to be put in position so that they could be able to lay hands on the apostle. Amen. And so that's how God gave it to me. And so that's how we're going to go with it. I'm not going to be very long. We're going to change it up. How we going to do you? I'm going to go first. Um, uh, uh, Pastor Davis, then Dad, and then Prophet, okay? And then after that, then Apostle is going to come and seal you. Once he comes and seal you, then the Prophets are going to lay hands individually and pray over you, okay? And that's how we're going to do it. And then Apostle Warren is going to finish it out. Is that okay? All right. Listen. Whew, we are here to validate and confirm that God has assigned you to ordain you as such as a time as this in the season. This affirmation is the introduction to your new beginning. As the apostle, you are considered the dream awakener. 
the revelatory of the word, the builder of man. We are here to present you with the keys to the kingdom. For God is calling you into the time as like he did in Samuel, to beginning to bring rebuke and correction to the people and houses of God that are operating falsely and contrary to God's law. You are being called to be an official representative charged with the commission. The true calling of an apostle, number one, is personal conviction. Do you have a conviction in your calling, an inner conviction you must know in your heart you were called to be an apostle? Amen. Number two, confirmation. Second Corinthians 13 and 1. This will be the third time I'm coming to you by the mouth of two or three witnesses. Every word shall be established. Number three, identifying with the signs, meaning to identify the signs in your own life. You will begin to understand the journey ahead of you. Luke 14, 28, the short version says to sit down and count the cost. Weigh it out. Make sure that this is truly of God in you. Number, uh, number four, you to be set apart. Means another fire burns in you. Not set from the people, but there's another type of fire that burns in you. That's standing on the outside of boundaries of how things are done. You are not traditional. You don't go with just the flow of church. Church is not just knowing what you see a different way that is supposed to be presented because how God speaks to you. You're a spiritual entrepreneur. You got to be willing to take chances, but be willing to change within you. Personal encounter with sure. That means that he called you directly. That changed your life. That will firmly set you toward the goal of the apostle. You were called early. Even in your sin, you still had a hunger for God. A true zeal that was not satisfied by what was being taught, but desiring and knowing that there had to be more. You were trained in secret. You were active in ministry in your church, but you received your calling. It seemed as if you was going backwards, but you was actually in the right place in the right direction. Rejection and opposition. You're not being invited. They don't want to listen to you. It's like having spiritual weights. Spiritual weights are what that strengthens you, and they help you to face and overcome rejection and opposition. When you can handle a rejection and opposition, that makes you fit for the master to use you. You're called to forsake everything. This apostleship will cost you your life. Your friends, your family, your material possession, and even your country. If you felt sometime or even went through a point where you were tricked out of your privilege or lost honor, then rejoice. You're on the right track to be an apostle. Suffer for the calling. You have suffered. Sometimes you have to rethink about the suffering of the apostle. Your face as part of a preparation is both a privilege and a necessity for your mandate. Call to leadership. Never just satisfied with just following, but take your responsibility for actions and the actions of others. Never forget your failures, but mature from them. Seek the truth always for yourself. Has a pattern, the old to the new. The ability to see spiritual hunger in people of God. The ability to see the flaws in the old church structure. Desire to urge it unto a new. Being a master builder who sees and recognizes the weak points. If you can identify with these points, if you know them to be true in your heart, then be confident you have been called and you shall be confirmed. Know that the fire of apostolic preparation will strip you of everything you are. It will mold you into a whole new image of Christ. And as an apostle, you do not try to be out of order, but you just simply see things in a different, in a broken church system that others cannot. What you see, the things correct and incorrect cannot help, but to judge according to the standards of what's in you. You desire to show the people of God a promised land where things are different, a better way, a new building that does not have the flaws of the old. When the scripture that he gave me, he gave me the scripture of 1 Samuel 16, 12, and 13. I got it, I got it. The scripture that he gave me reminded me of David. The Bible said David was a man after his own heart. And when Jesse went down, when, when Samuel went down to find David, the new Israel king, he had to go through all of the brothers and even the father, the father that had the son didn't even believe in the son. Amen. 
and casted him to simply be nothing but a shepherd boy. But David had, but God had to call to Samuel to tell them to bring David in because the very least was the very one that held the promise. He was the one that they anointed that was gonna hold the family. And they didn't even understand what they shouted him and pushed him to the side, looked over him and discarded him and said he would never be nothing because they based his stature as a little ruddy boy. But they had no idea of the power that stood within him and how God was going to raise him to be great. When God got ready to anoint David, the Bible God showed me in the spirit where Jesse stood there with his mouth open in amazement because he couldn't believe out of all of his sons that the baby would be the king. The king. The very king. The king is so significant because like Apostle said, a royal priesthood. You have a king spirit. You are a builder of men. You are an encourager. You're a pusher. You're a revelator. And how God gives you the word is so extraordinary. And it's so powerful for such a time as we are in now. Don't be afraid to walk into the fullness because you have been held back now. You have been held back now. God said it's your time and I'm about to thrust you. I'm about to push you like I've never pushed you before. So with the apostolic mantle that is about to be released on you, the things are about to change in your life. Don't be afraid of the change. Embrace the change. Accept the change. There will be isolated moments. There will be lonely times. There will seem as if nobody understands what you're going through. Sometimes you will be on an emotional roller coaster and not even really understand why. God's going to always deal with you in a different capacity than he deal with others. But don't be afraid to try your new skin on. Don't be afraid to wear your name. When you wear your name, wear it with humility. Wear it with covering. Wear it with pride, but not puff pride. But the pride that he saw you and allowed you to be called in. That's the pride you want to have. So I truly bless God for you. And I release this. I'm not going through all that. <laughs> this right here got everything. It got all them in it. I'm going to cover it all in one time. Listen. I'm going to release the apostolic in your mind, your heart, and in your spirit. That it may rise up and that it may come to a full. You have the power now to walk in the authority where you can bring things into a command. You can command your spirit to line up. You have the spirit of a carpenter because you are to build. You build things. You build men. You build people. You build things in churches of God. Not material things, but the builder of the spirit. You are such an igniter and a fire that's in you, and it has to burn. So don't be afraid to let that light shine. Don't be afraid to let that burn. When you go in places, you won't always reveal who you are. There are times God wants you to just ease in and ease out. Yeah. You can't say every time. You can't introduce yourself. Sometimes God don't want you introduced. Sometimes he wants to keep you covered in him. But he sends you in for observation. Don't be afraid to be a watcher because as a watcher, you have to learn to see and you have to see from every aspect. Don't get caught up in the protocol of man, but stay to the spirit of God. Listen and fine tune your hearing that he leads you and guides you. Learn the things that God wants you to learn and allow him to teach you as you go. Don't be in a rush, be patient. Continue to allow your fruit to bear. Show your fruit that God is in because the attributes of God is in you. Don't be afraid to release and don't be afraid to share. Fear has been your struggle. My God. You haven't been accepted by everyone because everybody say he don't look. They tell me all the time she don't look like an apostle. I say, well, how do you know what an apostle looks like? We wasn't here in those days and we have no idea. But I am who I am and I won't let nobody change what I know. So whether they agree or not, it's all God, and that's all that matters. So I release I, the spirit of authority, 
I release you to walk into the full apostolic mantle. I release my mantle into you that you may be able to walk in the full allegiance of what God is calling you. The power that God is, the supernatural raising, the supernatural understanding, the supernatural, the spirits of the fivefold shall come upon you. You shall walk and operate accordingly. There will be times you will operate in the evangelistic spirit. There are times you are called to be the teacher. Don't be afraid to be the teacher because the teacher brings life. There are times that you must be the pastor because you have to have the heart for the sheep. There are the times that you will walk in the prophetic. When the spirit of prophetic is on you, walk and bring, and bring correction and speak the things in the oracles of God to the fullness. And then there are times that you must be the apostle where the keys of the kingdom is very vital in your hand. There are doors that you're about to unlock with the authority that I release upon you. Heaven is opening it up and releasing our supernatural as we speak. Your spirits are enhancing. Your senses are enhancing. Yeah, now not my shiki. Yeah. He's going to put a run in your foot like never before. Ah, New territories that are being about to be enlarged by your presence. I hear God say the wind is about to carry your presence into unknown places. Ah, woo! Come on. God. The four winds are at your command. Speak to the winds. And command them to take the word for it. Send it with the authority that God has given you. Release what God has given you. For the nation is needed right now. Never compromise. Never change. Never get comfortable. Always be on alert. And always be aware. In the mighty name of Jesus. We glorify you. And it is so. It is so. Right after Davis, um, Shepherd, their daddy, their warrior. Glory to God, glory to God. My God, you have just walked into and stepping into an office I'm more than sure <laughs> that you didn't ask for. Come on, What I can truly say about a true apostle, one that God himself has called out, you have chosen, it's not an office that you uh, get excited, so much excited about. And you think that you can do this and you can do that, but it, it comes with so much entail. Yes. One thing that you can understand about uh, this office, this posture, that you walk in as the apostle of God, is that every apostle still needs a leader. Hallelujah. Never ever get to the place because you have so much authority. And believe me that authority goes in ramifications that you, as you walk even, as you grow more, as you mature more, you'll begin to see the authority that you have that it's like unbelievable. But it is an open gate to the enemy as well. And so you have to make sure that you have someone that covers you. Someone that speaks into your life. Someone that is you are um, accountable to. 
Just because you are the apostle does not mean you don't need to be accountable. That is the greatest thing I can tell you is to stay accountable. Stay accountable. Because there are times that no matter what, everything that can come against you, everything that can come to you, from the greatest to the least, will come. And because you have that authority, it will make you feel like you have all the answers. And I can tell you, you don't. So that's why I'm saying to you, to make sure that you stay accountable. Stay accountable. Another thing is that we understand that the apostle is one that what establishes. It goes out and establishes. And this word establish means that you're able to create. You're able to create what is not there. That's the type of authority that you have as an apostle. You're able to see a thing and redirect it because you're walking instead in the stead of Christ himself, Jesus, the authority, the main authority. And that comes with much, much humility. It may seem like it's the highest office that you can go to, but it's the place where you walk the lowest. Yes, that's true. Right there. It is. It's the place where you sit and you can see, but you're gotten because you're being uh, affirmed into, because no one can ordain you. Come on. But you're being affirmed into this. We are just making the declaration of what God has already said. That's why in apostleship, you've already walked there. Just a We are just here on earth yes. to put our signature. And God trusts us enough Come on, girl. to be able to do so. But what I'm saying to you on today is to be very careful of what you establish. Yes. There are those that are going to come under your tutelage. There are those that, that you churches and pastors and and I even hear the Lord say that you were you were you were pastor other pastors. You were pastor. You were even mentor. Just like you're being mentored into apostleship, you would reach that level of ramification to be able to do so. And when you do that, just be very careful of what you establish. It's called wisdom is the principal thing, like never before. So with that being said, make sure you walk lightly before God. And you'll walk heavy before God's people. Come on, man. Yeah, but you will walk in humility. So there'll be things that people would never be able to understand, but God will give you the insight that be able to see. And that's all I can give you on today is to walk lightly, that you can walk heavy, that you can stay humble. Amen. Blessings, my friend, my big brother. No, nope. I'm going to get quick, you know, quickly to the point. I am looking for the oil of covenant. That's right here. The oil of covenant, which is also signified the spirit of prophecy. It is. I heard uh, Apostle Perkins talk about the different offices that uh, the Lord will allow you to operate from and you do have a uh, strong prophetic anointing on your life along with the apostolic and it is for you to reveal the intent of God you are to, to reveal heaven's agenda 
You are to speak in the kingdom lingo. You are to carry a kingdom fragrance. Come on here. So that we can understand what heaven is saying. That's good, Prophet. That is. Apostle just said about That's walking heaven, that comes with it. You, Apostle already said it. We already know you are a genuine revelator of the word. Yes. Very unique way of how God shows you what those scriptures mean. Show do. Mm -hmm. So you are. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, we just, those we are just, witnesses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you are to again to reveal. I won't keep you long. What God is intending for his people to hear. And that is what the prophetic is about. Revealing God's intent. So that the people of God can grow. Father God in the name of Jesus Lord God we thank you. God, we thank you for this oil that is dripping down on him, Lord God. We thank you now for the revelation knowledge that you are giving him. We thank you, Lord God, for the signs and wonders that you are releasing through him now. That even when he thinks of miracles, they will happen. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, we thank you now. And the first miracle, Lord God, will begin at his home. Yes, God. Yes, Come on here. Yes, God, we bless you now. Thank you, Jesus. Because you must be solidified, brother. And you will be proven by those that have overlooked you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Awesome. Woo! Oh, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Just, just think back. Because what is happening? You ever hear people talk about the double anointing? You have apostles in it. The apostles, that's the apostolic. Yes. And the prophetic, those, that's the anointing the prophets carry. Yes. And you put the apostolic and the prophetic together, it's, 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 it's uh, God, apostolic. Apostolic. Come on, I like that. That's right. You got the apostolic anointing. Mm -hmm. And then that's the, the apostolic, that's the anointing on the, on the apostles. Then you got the prophetic anointing, what we all talk about, that's the anointing on the prophet. The apostolic is the double. The apostolic is that as an apostle, you can go and establish, but you still can operate as a prophet, as a seed. That's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That individual get attacked more than anybody. You know what I'm saying? Yes. That one with the apostolic anointing because you have the ability to shield. That individual, the enemy want to kill you at birth. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, that's what that is. He, he want to kill you at birth. If he can't kill you at birth, he gonna try to mess up your childhood. He try yeah. to mess you all up growing up. Yeah. Then all of a sudden you end up marrying somebody. That, oh gee. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. Already. Mm -hmm. yeah. See, see. She's gonna come out. Because of the anointing that's upon you and, and, and what's going to take place. Come I was sitting there and God told me, He showed me on the letter. He told me, He said, Okay. He said, What you get ready to do, you finna call her out of him. You've been, you've been waiting on the new wife to show up, but you got to release her. You release her. Oh, my God. <laughs> you couldn't release her because you've still been tormented by the old wife. By yeah. the old wife. Yeah. She traumatized you. Jeez. And I just said something about Mary. You, you, she, you, 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 yeah, yeah. He, he went to have labor. Yeah. Pain. <laughs> But what's going to happen? I'm going to count the assignment of the old relationship yes. that you can release it. Yes, okay? Because you still try to prove it, mm. even though it's been disproved. Mm. It's not even who you are. Mm -hmm. But at the time, it was for a season. And as a young man of God, she was put in your way to destroy. 
where you was going. She wasn't just, she wasn't designed to destroy you. She was here to try to stop you from getting somewhere. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. that's it. Wow. Yeah. You see. It wasn't because she just was a bad or crazy person. She just didn't understand the call. That, that part. So you had to come to the conclusion that I forgive her. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's that's an understanding. Yeah. Okay. Forgiveness is a word. But once you apply it, it becomes a spirit. Come on. Because if she was gone. And when I've said it, it's what I just said, you'd have never caught your stomach. Yeah, that's right. I'm finna release you from her now mm. because then I'm finna call yeah. your soulmate out. Call us! Yeah. Work the apostle. The soulmate don't come to you, the soulmate come from you. From you! Oh, Jesus! Oh, yeah! Woo! Yeah. Yeah. That's what it is. <laughs> Any woman that comes to you, she'll come from somewhere else. Come on here. Come on. Come on. Any man that comes to you, come from somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. What's rightfully yours got to come out to you. Yeah, absolutely. Jesus. I got you. You got it, Apostle? Yeah, I got you. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Y'all need to see your faith. Y'all need to see your faith. You see him? He feels a new one now. Y'all need to feel me. He, he, he feels himself now. He feels himself. That's, that's it. Hope you all to see his face. He like, oh! Okay. I got the bird from him. Yes. Yes. He was waiting for her to show up. He's he been all over Walmart. He's been all Walmart and we're trying to find him. Go and visit another church up here. They got to get you a church home. Yeah. <laughs> you don't need a church woman. You need a saved woman. Save yeah. You don't want no church woman. Because the church, come on, if you get a church woman, you got somebody empty. Because the church ain't nothing but a building. Once you find a building, you got to put some in it. Somebody said the revival is coming. <laughs> so come to me, now. come to me. <laughs> I didn't realize all the hell I had to go through, man, for the last 15 or 20 years. Now I see. Yeah, yeah. But it was some sleepless night, backslide yeah. nights, night and something. And God said, okay, I didn't call you for you. Yeah. You're going through for others. Yeah. Jesus. And that stuff didn't feel good, sure man. Don't. Show you get to connect with the room, somebody, you're out on the road preaching, and you get a phone call, hey, I ain't gonna be home when you get there. Mm -hmm. Now, what you leaving for now? <laughs> <laughs> for now? Why now? What's for People now? People can leave you for no reason <laughs> if you don't birth them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Come on! Oh, you, you see that? Right? If they didn't come from you, they'll walk away from you. Yeah. Oh, See, thank God, Moba didn't hurt. But now it's been a change. Hey, thank you. <laughs> it's been a change. Thank you, Jesus. I hear this in the spirit, and I'm going to let you know. Who? Yes. Ebo Shio Kura Hata. Jesus. Sheba. An eight and a half shoe, that's going to be her shoe size. Uh oh. Ooh, girl. Hey. Jesus. Come on. Yeah. Come on here. Between a 12 and a 14, in a way, because you don't, you don't, you care about a little bit of one. You, you want a you want a woman with some meat on the bone. So from between a 12 and to a 14. He ain't body bias. Yeah. You've been, you've been, you've been teased because you're not a tall man. So you don't need a tall woman. Right. So he gonna give you a woman just a little bit. I see about an inch and a half. Saw you, and what that's gonna do? That inch and a half is gonna stroke your ego. Just, just, just that inch and a half. I only need you because you know what? You get, listen, listen to me. You hear what I'm saying? Because he been broken. He been broken by females. Yeah. 
and church peoples that had been developed. So this this apostle had been crushed. Yeah. So he's in the season now of restoration. Yeah. So everything that happened, you can say, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You finna get favors upon favors. My yeah. God. I'm you, you know what I'm I don't know where you're staying at, but that's been a change. You deserve it. Come on. Come on. People's going to go to writing you out of check, and you're going to have to feel it. That's right. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. You hear what I'm saying? You're going to get these stuff. All you want to do is, is, is think about it. You're going to need prayer, but it's just a thought now. That's because right. you're already praying for your stuff just been delayed. Come on. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. And now you're delayed. Has been activated because you stepping into a whole nother realm today. Wow. And what's happening now, that things that was delayed, that was delayed, it's going to be happening. So God is going to bring all your stuff up the grave. Oh my God. Everybody's going to change. Yeah. It's going to change. You hear what I'm saying? You hear what I'm saying? You go to the supermarket and pick out your favorite color. Dress for her. Well, mm. put it in the bag between the 12, because her weight is going to frustrate between the 12 to the 14. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You get the prettiest dress, the color you like, and you put it in your closet by your suit. Mm -hmm. mm. Come on! Well. And what that's going to start doing to you, that's going to bring you back alive. Because you shut down. Now God's going to wake you back up. Yeah. Because you can't operate effective as an apostle. Apostle you is shut down. Come on. That's right. Apostle got to be free. Free. Come on. You got to be free. You can't be in debt. You can't be holding folk. Folk can't be holding stuff on your head. Because right. when you go to speaking right. to people. That's Demons right. were me at you with what they challenged you about. That's right. One of the biggest things that happened to me when I got financial free. I got my I know that's right. Yes, <laughs> When I started trusting God with my money, the money is not a problem. It freed me up in a prophetic grip. Yes, it will. Come on, I got to get free. See, see, it comes with that. You can't walk as a prophet or apostle being broken. And they're full of debt and all this stuff. You pull me smarter than that. That's right about it. You can be at the beginning of it as a young man or woman, but once you get this type of wisdom, it clears up your credit, it clears yeah. your debt yeah. up. Yeah. And so you understand now when I did then I can't do that no more. Yeah. 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 So you got to be a, a, dis a, a distributor now. Yeah, that's right. And that frees you up, so now you got liberty. Yeah. See, because when she comes, you can't be worried, man, I got to go pray. I got to go pray. So, uh, uh, you're going to become prayer. Yeah. You're going to become prayer. You're going to become yeah. prayer. Come yeah. on. Right there. You said I, I operate in the spirit. That was yeah. good, man. How much time do you think I spend with God every day? Yeah. How much time do you think I lock in and go in and and family? How much time do you think I do? I don't know. How much time? When you stay in there, Girl. You ain't got to go in. You ain't got to be going in. Come on, now. <laughs> Come on, Jesus. If you already at Mama House, you got to be going this. I stay there. I yeah. stay in this presence. Yeah. That's it. Just right. stay I'm there. there. Yeah. What keeps you there? Stay away from semen. That's yeah. it. Come on. That's what keeps you there. Just yeah. stay there. Just stay there. And once you get the real spirit of God in you, you're going to hate singing. Yeah, real spirit. I don't worry about the lip, right, lip, right, feel tip. I'll yeah. be around beautiful women. I'll be around me and women, me and all women. But yeah. I'm not out here for no sex. Yeah. Come on. I'm not here for sir. no car, no stuff. Come My on. relationship is more important. It's more important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus. That's my word again. That's my word, my father. Amen. See, you got to tell it because many was called. But few. Few are chosen. God. And when you went through the stuff you went through, yeah. and he chosen you, you've been chosen, it changes everything. It does. It's the few that still stand. That's it. Mm. And these are the people God is looking for in this yeah. hour. Yes, sir. Because yes. a lot of preachers have sold the church out. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. A lot yeah. of preachers and people and preachers and stuff, they're sold out of America. Yes, they have. And they forgot they stay here too. Yeah. yeah. They yeah. shut up. <laughs> they forgot. Wow. They don't think they're living here yeah. anymore. Wow. Wow. So we got to get involved with all of this. That's with the what politics of all of it. We got to raise the people in our churches. Yeah. yeah. That part. Yeah. yeah. We've been shouting, they've been changing laws. Yeah. Come on. All right, sir. Come on. That's true. That's true. We shouting all over the church, but we're going to the church. They changing the laws. Now, they, anything they, they do anything they want to do, can't nobody check them. Sure, okay. And then now you got the crooked people yeah. telling the church people what, yeah. what we can't do. What we can't do. They shout with us. God never intended that to happen. No. Never. That's why he's calling you apostle. Yes. So, Father, man of God, stand behind him right here. Let me, yes. wait, let me get through. Let me go and leave him alone. Father, he identified with the new. Thank you, God. With the, the she in him. Mm. Yes. What he's been looking for has been in him all the time. All the time. But it was covered up by an episode in his life. Yes. And he couldn't see past what that woman did. Yes. Oh, that woman hurt me. Oh, that yes. woman did something. But that woman made you. Yes. Yes. She made you. Yes. That woman that walked on on me, she made me. I would have never became who I am now if that woman didn't break my heart. Yes. But I'm so glad that when you become born again, God will give you a new heart. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Oh, he got a bunch of new hearts. Yes. Oh, yeah, he got new hearts. Yes. So I pray now, Father. That the old spirit that have dictated his life, as he get ready to shift, I reach and get their problems. Yes, God. Because now we're problem solvers. And anytime you deal with purpose, purpose solve problems. Yes. When you deal with purpose, purpose solves problems. Yes. I command her to loose him now. Yes, God. Every word curse. That she spoke against his emotions. Yes. Every word curse. Yes. She spoke against his manhood. Yes. Every word curse. She spoke against his ministry. Yes. Oh, there she come right there. There she come. Come on. There she come. Oh God, I feel her. Watch it. Watch it. You're gonna have to get back up. But because I see her, I see her finger there. She ah, she been yeah. scratching you for years. I'm looking at the fingertips of this, the fingertips of this woman. This woman been clawing, clawing in your life for years. Instead of just leaving you alone and glory to God. You have given her everything and just said, I just want to be free, leave me alone. But that ain't good enough because she's on an assignment from the devil. But today, as being a man of God, I call out in the name of Jesus. Look him out. Crap, I break the power of I reverse the curse. In the name of Jesus. The generation of failures. I cast it off of you now. Yes. And way down. Yes. Hid in your side. Is your soulmate. Yes. Elizabeth. I call her out. Come on, Elizabeth. Elizabeth. I call you out. I hear the spirit say, the spirit of Elizabeth. Of Elizabeth. Please. This woman, God finna put in your life. She gonna be the one that confirms. It's gonna come up, and this woman gonna have a revelation in her spirit. You see how you got that revelation anointing? She gonna have the anointing to reveal when somebody else come around, the baby gonna leave. I thank you for the Elizabeth that you have deposited, and I call her out today that she will come into reality. Ha! Show. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. I release her now. Yes. Behold. Yes. Behold today.
apostle first came up, the first thing the Lord said to me was, welcome to purpose. Yes. He said the moments and times where you felt unworthy, the moments and times where you were trying to figure out why you were here, what you would do, he said, welcome to the purpose. He also said to tell you, just like the Bible when the story of that wedding, he said, whatever you say do, you do it. He said, just like Apostle said, to piggyback off what he said, you ain't gonna want to lay hands, because you already said, I ain't lay hands on nobody. Yeah. <laughs> it's folks that you don't have to. There's men that's gonna come under you, that's gonna come to undergird you, but there's also men that you're gonna have to raise up and put into position. Yes, yes. There's men that you're gonna give to. There's men that's been trying to find themselves. I told you before, God is going to give you to teach me and how to be men. He's gonna give you to go back into childhood and correct things that happen with your children. And then he'll give you the ability to raise them up yes. into the man that they're supposed to be. Yes. He said, don't worry about home, don't worry about mine. He said, if I called you and if I heard you for this, then I'm taking care of everything yes. and I'm going to to a stumbling block. Because it's been playing in your mind, but if I'm going to do this, then what's going to happen to you? I can't go and I can't do it if this is what's going to happen. He said, don't worry about that, I got that. He said, all I need you to do is go. Also, the pastor said as well, and I believe the pastor said it earlier, you already know, because you've already been doing the work of a pastor, he sends you places. Yes. You get a unction in your spirit, or all of a sudden, the pastor or apostle, somebody coming to your mind, I gotta go visit this person, I gotta go check on this person, I gotta go here, I gotta go there. Be careful of some of the places that you enter to now and conceive. Uh -huh. Because now the anointing that's on your life is going to do one or two things. Yes. For them to line up, or yes. for them to shut down. Yes. Because they cannot keep operating in the era that they've been operating in. Yes. And they cannot keep operating in the procrastination and the sloth that they've been operating in. So you coming in with like one or two things, it's a dual or double edged sword. Oh it's either correction to get right or correction to shut it down. So he said, in this season that he's now brought you to the anointing that's on your life, he's called yes, you either get right or, like you said, to walk away and let it go. situation and he just came right back out and said and we were sitting there laughing and we were like no nah, see I've been hit he said y'all gonna get it but see it's an amazing thing that we said that that's going to happen but besides that you're coming into a place of restoration as well because you have to be restored and you're going to get yourself together for a few days where God is just going to consecrate you yeah and then you're going to be restored. And it's going to give you a new vision, a new outlook. Just like how she said, well, once you get through this ordination, then yes. you're going to come out preaching the word of God. And it's going to be a totally different experience. Yes. How God is going to give you a word that's so profound that we're so used to how you preach that it's just going to be a word of elevation. Yes. That it's even going to blow our mind. Yes. Because every time we bring a word, we're already on the edge of our seat with our phones out typing each other to my, oh, that's a bridge, that bridge, that bridge, that bridge. And it'll make us go back and think on how we can go back and bring the word. And it'll make us go back and say, you know what, we gotta go, mm -mm. That, we gotta go back and get our, our own selves right. And it's just a privilege. And me and you both have a ministry that we have to get started. Because the inner healing that I have to do with the women is still the inner healing with the men that you still have to do. And God said, we can't delay it any longer. I was sitting there today talking about, Lord, we already got so much we got to do. 
but it's the season because the time is now. The words that you kept saying last year, God said now, our season is now, and the time to come up is now, because up is calling us, up is calling you. So as you go up, we go up. Be blessed, man of God. anointing on your life. You are already anointed. But I speak more 
more anointing. I speak unusual anointing. He gonna move on that job. Don't even say that. Come on, here. Yeah. Can 
And I paid too much. To just pass out my birthright. I have sons and I have daughters all over the world. I have babies and grandkids all over the world in the realm of the spirit. But you have to understand that all of that anointing and all of that anointing and all of that anointing and all of this anointing, this building is impregnated with wisdom. My prayer is that you don't give a spiritual abortion before you give birth to it. There's an impartation of all of this inside of you. You can't afford to prostitute your promotion. And please don't mishandle this man. Please don't do it. Please don't. Everybody want to be deep. Come on. Deep call it the deep. Don't never call nobody that you think deep and ask them to let you preach. Don't never ask nobody to let you ask you ask them to let you sing because what God has anointed, God has already pre-assigned. Your gifts will make room for it. Ephesians 4 talked about the gifts and the gift of grace through Christ Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You ain't gotta ask nobody. You ain't. Come on. Come on. Come on. Don't look for deep flow, come deep, call it the deep. Come on. Because deep situations don't call for you. Oh my God. Good. Not deep people. Yeah. Yeah. Deep situations. Good. And as I seal this and, and I share with all the prophets and, and the evangelists and, and to you, Apostle, I, 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 I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to tell you this. I have to warn you spiritually and give you spiritual warning yes. in the realm because real prophetic ain't always houses called yes, the man. Yes. Everybody that prophet and prophet yes. just poured into. Yes. Everybody that apostle and apostle poured into and apostle yeah. poured into. Come on. A new spiritual strength of yes. lust yes. has been reassigned to Show all the other Lust of the flesh, yes. lust of the spirit of greed, yes. lust of pleasure and desire. Yes. You can be a wall shaker all day long, but until you become a gate shaker. scheduled to preach in Lagos, Nigeria for 30 days and, and I have 26 churches that are covering Lagos. And the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me and said that you won't be going because somebody close to you is going to die. So a week and a half prior to the, to the departure of, of, of Africa when I was supposed to go, I told the church, Make sure your house is straight. Yeah. Because somebody's about to die. Yeah. 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 I know that sounds like a general. No, but that's it. But somebody that was close to me, and I didn't understand that two hours before the departure of my plane, the phone rang. My first cousin, which is a, a bishop, passed. Mm. And he wanted me to preach the funeral. And then two hours, an hour after that, my other first cousin passed. Wow. And then an hour after that, my other first cousin passed. Yeah. And then a couple of days later, one of the apostles that I cover at one of my California churches passed. Yeah, passed. So there was about five funerals in yeah. seven days. Yeah. Now, it, it, I'm saying this for a purpose. Being an apostle will make you have to decide from oh, different oh, decisions. Oh, yeah. Do I go and deal with the 26? Or do I deal with the dead? Is it? My God, today. Jesus! Do I deal with the dead? 
So you're going to have to deal oh with a difficult decision. Jesus. Due to the salvation. I, re I received the call. I received the call. That, uh, 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 prophet, I want you to stand with me if you don't mind. I, I, I promise you I'm hearing you. Yes, God. While it's in my spirit, happy birthday, prophet. Yes. <laughs> I called you for a purpose, prophet. I received a call. I'm, I'm, I'm flying, flying, flying constantly. I did two continents and three countries in 51 days. And I received a call, and, and somebody from um, Africa called and said, Apostle, you, you fly too much, and you pay them people too much money. Yeah. I said, okay, so they say, you get your own jet. I just okay. said that. Come on, um, girl. So they said, uh, send, me your, uh, send me your text number and a letter. And then they delivered my private jet yep. to Love Field across wow. the street. Okay. But I'm saying something with this. I'm saying something with this. Everybody don't need to know what you have. Jet that was gifted to me. Yeah. Apostle, the, the fuel for the jet cost over $5,000. Yeah. Yeah. Just to make a trip. Just Are you hearing me, Yeah. Yeah. Just to make a trip was over $5,000. Yeah. And now, in my uh, limited imagination, now, I'm, I'm not too good at math. It was my favorite subject. <laughs> but watch this. Uh, 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 do I pay $5,000 for the prestige? Yeah. Come on. Come on, Come on. Come on. And the private pleasure? Yeah. Or do I pay the money for the ticket? Come on. In other words, what I'm saying is, you just got blessed with a gift that you yeah. really can't afford right now. Come on. So all of your past teaching and all your spiritual experience don't mean that you know how to operate in this private elevation that God has just allowed you to go to until after you backslide, until you fall, until you cry, until you suffer, until you learn how to sacrifice the five tables in the church. Three tables in the temple called the altar of sacrifice. And every time something gets wrong on the altar of sacrifice, the blood hits the threshold of the floor that's inside of the temple. The problem is people get positions, and now you're an apostle. They want to sit at the table, but they don't want to lay on the altar. At a table, there are gonna be two people at your table. Either they're gonna be eaters or they're gonna be enemies. Either they're gonna be eaters at your table or enemies. He said, I'll prepare a table before you in the presence of my enemy. And all that means is they're gonna be your eaters or they're gonna be your enemies. But you gotta watch who you connect with as an apostle, tell them prophet. Because some people will bring a table, but it's a, it's a card table. Card tables, they play games on. And when they finish yeah. playing the game, they fold yeah. up their table yeah. and go home. Yeah. 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 And if you ain't never heard his testimony and know his spirit, you can't know his heart. The heart of a man is deceitfully wicked who can know it. But you can know the spirit that he operated in. Before you know his spirit, before we sin it, the spirit of the apostle, the spirit, the spirit of impartation. Before we sanction and seal you with our because we're still accountable to whoever we give our name. Because you've already 
we succeeded. That's right. lineage and because of his lineage because of her lineage and his lineage now you have been imparted all of you not only with an inheritance but with a DNA yes. before I left to go to Africa the embassy called me before I went to the Holy Lands the embassy called me I promise you this is not about me trust me man of God servant of the living God this is not about me but God will promote you and put you yes, in a position that men of great honor and kings will recognize who you are. Yes. So when you pull my lineage and everybody I cover, which means that now that I've signed your document, I don't play with my birthright. That's right. That's it. That's it. That's it. When they find my name, my lineage, which is now parts of your inheritance and theirs and theirs. I promise you, you can find it in the Vatican. It's all the way in the Vatican. So please, you're getting what most people can't get. You're getting what most people, and when God tell you to do something, do it. Do it. Just do it and don't be a shock when you do it. Just do it. Yeah. I said that my wife spoke to me. Baby, did I give you a sheet of paper? What's on that sheet of paper? Okay, you know why you're carrying it? Because it was given to you. What were your instructions? I said, hold it until you get instructions on what to do with it. Are you hearing me? God will give you instructions to do stuff you didn't even think about. Before we leave, make sure you request $100 from me. Not you, her. You hear me? Because the Lord wanted me to pour into her. I don't even have to know why. Come on, girl. Okay, I'm saying that to say this, and I'm going to say it. God is about to pour into you. And you don't even have to know 